Well, hello again, Haskellings. As promised, I've gone and cleaned up our advent of code module, and I've added in documentation. But I've used a special syntax that includes markup that can be used by Haddock, Haskell's documentation system. It includes examples and section headings, and when you run it through Haddock, you get this beautiful HTML documentation, even with source code, all hyperlinked, and looking just like the online documentation that you might find through Google on Hackage. I recommend always documenting any real-world code that you write, and Haddock is a great way to do it. Day 13's puzzle has us looking at bus timetables. We are given a bus timetable as a list of integers, and they seem to all be prime, which is interesting. We're going to have to do some modular arithmetic to determine which bus should arrive first. Our input file consists of two lines of text. The first line has the timestamp, and the second line has the list of buses. We can just use read to grab the integer value from the timestamp. And for the buses, we're first going to split on comma to separate them in the list, and then we're going to have to map a read bus function, which is going to give us a nothing value for the string x, and read the integer value if it's an integer. Buses marked with an x are out of service, so let's use map maybe to ignore them. We can then write a function to calculate the amount of time you have to wait for a bus. We can do that by first calculating how long ago the last bus of that number arrived. That should be the remainder after division by the bus number. We can then subtract that from how long the bus takes between arrivals, and that should give us the waiting time. We can then map our bus time function over all of the bus numbers to find out which one will arrive next. We can use the minimum function to find the minimum number in that list, but we also need to get the bus number. We can do that by making a tuple with the bus number as the second element, and the minimum function will still find us that lowest waiting time. The puzzle asks us to calculate the product of the waiting time and the bus number, so we just write a small helper function that can do that. And that should be our final answer. Let's check that, and we have a gold star. Part 2 boils down to finding the solution of a system of modular equations. Now, I'm sure you've realised by now that this is not a live stream, and I often pause the recording to go away and think about how to present a nice Haskell solution for you all, and introduce some Haskell concepts along the way. For this puzzle, I tried to come up with a neat abstraction for modular equations, and to try and solve our system of modular equations from first principles. However, I was defeated, and like many others it seems, I looked up online how to solve our system of modular equations. With that being the case, I'm going to fast forward through this video a little bit, and just point out some of the interesting things along the way. Now the abstraction I thought of was to create a data type mod, and the x and m in that data type should be int int, of course. So the theorem that's getting used here is called the Chinese remainder theorem. It's able to combine two of our mod data types into one. The algorithm for this was essentially copied from a mathematics website. As you can see here, I'm getting a bit frustrated with all the little bugs that keep cropping up, but fortunately I do persist on and get a result at the end. Haskell's int data type is 64 bits, and that's generally enough for advent of code problems, but sometimes we need the integer data type, which is an unbounded integral type. We end up by folding the CRT operation over the modular equations represented by our bus list. We get back our answer, so let's check that. And that grants us today's second star. Happy Haskelling, everyone!